Hello, and welcome to Lecture 3 of Phys 1104, the unit on preliminaries. And in this lecture, we're going to look at significant figures. I'm going to start by making a claim. I'm going to say that my age is 1.372755642075141191 times 10 to the 9 seconds. And my question to you is, do you believe me? So, aside from wondering what sort of nut would tell you their age in seconds, you might start off by thinking, well, okay, how many years is that? Well, if you work it out, it's about 43 years, which perhaps sounds plausible. But I'm going to say there's still something very wrong with my claim. You shouldn't believe me. If you count digits, then you'll find that the ones place, that two, is right there. So that's the seconds. And every digit after that is telling you fractions of a second. So that if you actually count to the last digit, you see that I've given you my age to the nearest nanosecond. Well, do you really believe I know my age to the nearest nanosecond? I've given you too many significant figures. I've told you digits that I have no way of knowing. This is what significant figures are. They're the digits in a number which you actually have reason to know. It's not the number of digits after the decimal, and it's certainly not the number of digits you've written down. And so, digits that you simply don't know, you shouldn't write. But there are also other digits which are placeholder zeros, which tell you how big the number is, but are not actually digits that are important other than establishing the order of magnitude. And some examples will help you see what I mean by that. Look at this first number that I've written, 0 0.03501 seconds. And I'm going to tell you it has five digits after the decimal place. We'll just count them. And there are six digits written down because there's the zero before the decimal place. But it only has four significant figures. Those first zeros are not significant figures. They're placeholder zeros. They're there to tell you that that first digit, the three, is in the one-hundredths of a second place. So they're establishing the order of magnitude. And so this is the same as writing 3.501 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. And if you write it that way, it's clearer that it has four significant figures. Here's another example, this 862,000 kilometers. So the 8, 6, and 2 are certainly sig figs. What about the zeros? Are those placeholder zeros? Well, we don't actually know unless we did the measurement. If we know that we actually measured to the nearest kilometer, and it just happened to come out to a reasonably round number, 862,000, then those are significant figures right out to the last zero. But if we don't actually know it, if we only measured to the nearest thousand kilometers, then those are just placeholder zeros. So this is ambiguous, and you shouldn't write it this way you should write it using scientific notation. And now you can make clear, on the one hand, if you only know the 8, 6, and 2, then only write them. But if you in fact know those other trailing zeros, you can write them in, and they are then clearly sig figs. So remember this example of measuring a door, where our naive measurement based on the idea of the measuring tape being precise to the nearest millimeter was this. And we could rewrite that this way, which now tells you that our measurement precision that we've sort of guessed is telling us that our height measurement has five significant figures and the least significant figure has uncertainty in it. The reason we really need to know our precision is that very often we need to compare our measurements with other things. So for example, let's suppose we're testing the grand unified theory of doors, and it predicts that the height of this door is this. Well, does this disagree with the measurement we've made? Because remember, naively, our measurement implies that the height of the door is no bigger than this. And that looks like the measurement and the theory are disagreeing. But remember, we don't really know what the precision is here. We really just sort of guessed that it's half of the smallest measurement on the measuring tape. That's not really good enough. We have to know. And so what we should be doing is making multiple measurements and using the statistics of them to tell us how big the uncertainty is. 
Let's take a moment to check your understanding. So if you're in the course and if you're accessing these videos through Moodle, this video is about to end and Moodle will ask you this question before sending you on to the next part of this video lecture. If you're not in my course, then I suggest you should still come up with an answer to this before you go on. So let's say your friend runs around a track and you use a stopwatch to time them. And like most stopwatches, this one can be read to the nearest hundredth of a second. So naively, we'd expect that the uncertainty in the timing is half of that, or about five thousandths of a second. So do you believe that your measurement of their lap time is this precise, to plus or minus 0 0.005 seconds? So have a look at the answers and come up with your answer, and then go on to the next part of this video lecture.